get you out of here on time for your break. There's three really main areas kind of just want to cover. One, I just want to, well, four. One, welcome you to DeVry. We're uh, really looking to, you know, build our campus here, so it's wonderful to be able to host events like this. Um, and then the next three things will be, one, an opportunity, thank you for an opportunity to share my story, um, kind of maybe describe a little bit about DeVry in this era of fake news and very strong opinions. It's not often the time you get a chance to actually get on campus and kind of see what we're about. Um, and then talk about what we see as far as you know, trends in education goes. And, and especially in the STEM field, we um, have industry advisory councils. So we meet with industry uh, folks all the time. And we actually place a lot of students in industry. So we're constantly working with them. And then we meet periodically, and they share what, what their needs are. And, would love to communicate that with, with you as well. So, um, so without further ado, I'm Chad Taylor. I actually was pretty much born and raised right here in San Diego. Uh, grew up in Pacific Beach in the 80s. So that would date me right there. Went to Mission Bay High School, well, with the middle school when it was a middle school. Mission Bay High School. Um, I'm actually married to a San Diego Unified teacher. She teaches third grade right over here in Rosa Parks, part of the Monroe Hoover Cluster. Um, also in a partnership with Price Charities. So if you know about um, all of the work that's going on down there in City Heights, it's, it's pretty fascinating as well. I'm also the parent of a seminar student who is a very hands-on, active kid, which has presented a number of challenges uh, given what's, what's going on in, in the school system these days. As I've noticed most of you are from different high schools, so you're, you're you, you live it and you're aware of it. So, um, so it's, kind of, it's kind of fascinating. So right out of Mission Bay High School, I myself as well went to UCSD, got an engineering degree, mechanical engineer, and in psychology, visual arts. And while I was working there, or going to school there, I realized, you know what, I really needed some experience because the job market was tough back then. So I was able to pick up an internship job at General Atomics, worked my way there. When I graduated, they offered me a job. and like Larry said, I actually remember Larry, so when I saw his name on the list, um, was really excited to, to see him, even though he probably doesn't remember me because I have more hair and <laughs> was a little bit better back then. But uh, was there for about 12 years. And I cannot say enough nice things about the culture of General Atomics, the wonderful people that are there. It's like being a kid in a technology candy store. I didn't plan on being there for more than just a couple years to get some experience, go back get a grad degree. And I blinked and 12 years went by. That's how much fun that place is. If you're into technology and you're into lot, being able to do lots of different things and have lots of different careers within one company with great people, that's the place you gotta go to. And they're not paying me to say that. That's just coming from a, from a former employee that was there. I was in the reactor group but also did a lot of work with the electromagnetic systems group. I worked with the um, advanced materials group, doing that with the film coders. Uh, but then the Berlin Wall came down and contracts started to dry up. I ended up in a yellow jumpsuit and a respirator, going into a lot of the old nuke labs and kind of doing a lot of decommissioning work, which was pretty kind of interesting, actually, if you're into that kind of thing. I didn't mind, I was young and fearless and didn't bother me at all, and we did a lot of great stuff. But then, you know, things started to turn, and thought, you know what, I need to go back and reinvent myself. Dot com boom was starting to move in. Went to San Diego State, got an MBA in their executive program, working the whole time. And then from there, was recruited out by a software company here in town to do systems engineering and product management, more from a business and engineering combination role. And so, literally seven years later, sold the company twice, I think, in that period of time. It's the third largest claims solutions provider in the United States, so we had a lot of work and a lot of traffic here in town. Uh, that was great. Moved out, started my own thing, and then ran into a buddy of mine and said, hey, DeVry's coming into town. You should come over as a professor, and you could still work in industry doing your consulting, and then help us grow the campus. I thought, this is great. So I came over and took a look, and once again, fell in love with the people, 
and, and here I am to this day. So, uh, <laughs> so uh, pretty happy to be here. Um, a little bit about DeVry, like who, who are, who are. Um, DeVry Education Group is actually one of the largest publicly traded universities in the United States. And we've got an international presence, presence as well. So there's not only DeVry University, which is, does associate's degrees and bachelor's degrees, which is regionally accredited, programmatically accredited, but we also have Keller Graduate School of Management, which to get an MBA. Um, we have Chamberlain College of Nursing. We have medical schools that we picked up in the Caribbean on our revitalizing. Uh, veterinary schools, Carrington College, which is like a vocational college. Uh, Becker Professional Education, which helps people get certified for the CPA exam. And we're actually a, a pretty large player in Brazil as well. It's kind of fascinating. DeVry University, you know, one component of that is, which is really where you are today, um, we're a career-focused university. So what does that mean? That means that we're not a research university. We're here to help students build their skills and get degrees. Um, we have the College of Business Management, Engineering Information Systems, Media Arts Technology, Liberal Arts, Health Sciences. So a number of different fields that people can go into. And mostly our students are working professionals. They have families typically. They come one night a week, take the classes, do, do a portion of it online. We're a traditional semester system, but we break it into two sections, two eight-week sessions. So they can get four classes done in the semester, but they run two classes for eight weeks and two classes for eight weeks. And it usually works out pretty well for them. Um, we're very hands-on here. We do active learning and kind of flip classrooms, so everything is built on working with people because also most classes are in the evening, so you don't want to definitely don't want to bore people right after they've done a long shift at work. And uh, we have lots of scholarship uh, dollars available to students. This is our own funds that we provide back to the students, and it's all all the information on how to do that is on the website. And I don't want to trip up on that because that's not my area. So um, I'll leave you with that. Um, one of the things that um, I go back, um, kind of talk about here, is that where where we see and hear from our industry advisors is what they're looking for. Is kind of breaks down into kind of several three kind of main categories. One category is, do you have the things on the resume that they need to kind of get you moving through the the, the process, which is education experience and in the tech world it often comes down to also do you have certifications you know those are the three legs of the stool so education experience and some type of certification so if you have to do an internship you have to go get some certification certifications being tested you can um, do Cisco networking um, your security uh, certification where you can go test for these things those are very 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 important the next kind of category of things that the, our advisory council tells us that they are continual, continuously looking for are soft skills, people skills. Can the, the candidates, the students, write a basic email to the CEO of the company? If they were asked to take a framework, whether it be just a basic SWOT analysis or some type of engineering analysis approach, can they go analyze pro a problem, whether, and it could be just this giant volume of data and all kinds of other things that they have to go research, and succinctly communicate the most important points of art. Filter it, prioritize it, understand it, break it down, and communicate it cleanly in an email that's been, you know, that they actually took time to proofread. Doesn't look like texting. Uh, uh, OMG. Like texting. Yeah, exactly. There's no emojis like buried in it, you know, no little pizza emoji or anything. It actually is professional because, you know, back in the old, old days, we used to, you know, we'd, get, we'd get paper memos in our, in our mailbox. Those are pretty much gone. It's all email based for the most part. Um, but the, that, that's critical. And in order to do that, of course, you have to be able to, you know, help people with their computational thinking skills and get people to prioritize. So it's not just about doing multiple choice tests. It's 
really about getting them working together. Oh, and the last one is, of course, you have to be able to work in teams. The, the days of jobs, the solo artists, I mean, those jobs are almost gone, gone, completely gone. And then last, last thing I will leave you with is that um, I'm finishing up my PhD. I'm almost done. I'll be done in May. So I'm very excited about it. I'm Claremont College. We're working on a um, industry university industry university collaboration. Claremont College is with Salesforce.com. It's a big, it's probably the largest CRM customer relationship software management customer relation customer relationship management provider on the planet. And it's really fascinating because what they have is they have people that are already working that aren't necessarily coming up through elementary school, middle school, high school, and college. They're embedded in the workforce around the globe. And they may not be able to go to traditional universities to develop their skills. And they may be on their own to do that. And how do you reach them and how do you help and collaborate with them to build those <coughs> skills and provide you know, micro-credentials, digital badges, whatever it may be, to, to kind of help elevate a workforce, a global workforce that may not even directly work for that company. So there's a lot of great creative things going on these days, and I'd love to talk to you about it more if you have time. Thank you. Okay.